Cody Miles here. Uh, I'm out here with my 2007 Subaru STI. Currently in the middle of uh, Little Tahunga Canyon, Southern California. 2007 Subaru STI started off as my daily driver uh, about four years ago or so. After you know growing up racing motocross, I started riding when I was two and started racing when I was about five. That competitiveness has always been inside me. So to get to the track for the first time, just an HPDE event out at uh, Willow Springs, which is the local track out here to me, and did pretty well. Was was pretty surprised at, at lap times and had an absolute ball. And then everything just snowballed from there. And then so fast forward to now, and I've been racing Time Attack for about three years. Yeah, three years going on and forth. Having an absolute blast with it. It's a ton of work, but it's something that I never stop thinking about. So as far as the engine's concerned, it's a, uh, it's a closed deck, still 2.5 liter. It's got some cams. It's got a Borg Warner EFR 7163 turbo on E85 currently putting out 495 wheel horsepower and I, if I remember correctly, 501 wheel torque. So it's a very happy power number. The power band is very responsive and very usable. Ambit FF4s, um, 18 by 10 and a half with a 285-30 Federal um, FC201 tires. Bigger tires, stickier tires, right? So then you have more lateral Gs. And your oil pan is, uh, you know, not the best for keeping oil where it needs to be. Sometimes it sloshes around left and right. And then suddenly you're sucking air and your bearings die. And there goes your $10,000 engine. So right behind me mounted on the cage is a tank that houses all of the engine oil now. So it's got a complete dry sump setup. I've gone through a few engines for various reasons, several of them being my very own fault. Um, that's just something that if you're trying to compete or race, you're gonna destroy engines, period. That's, there's no way to get around it. Um, but luckily this one behind me, or underneath me has lasted a good while and is showing no signs of issues. So you kind of learn with each one you kill. Going into 2017, uh, I was starting to get a little faster. I did Road Atlanta at that point with uh, top speeds of like 166 or so with no roll cage. Just kind of taking a step back and looking at safety as a whole, I definitely should have had a cage around me a while ago. So finally made that push heading into 20, uh, 2017 to do a roll cage, feel much safer, feel much happier about that. As far as aero, we've got chassis mounted splitter, canard and end plate entire setup by Spinnaker, APR 67 inch wing in the back, um, no crazy diffuser or anything like that. It's on the list, but there's not enough time in life, to be honest. This car started off as my daily driver, wholeheartedly. It is street legal, it's registered, it's got a license plate on the back. I wanted to be able to do well in a class like Limited, which is pretty aggressive, while maintaining a street legal car. Registered, insured, all of those things. I was looking into suspension and I was originally like, Coilovers were my go-to. For one, I never looked into air suspension. With a little bit that I knew about it, I thought it was just for low riders or super stanced out cars. And I didn't really have a ton of interest in either of those. I wanted to keep the car handling positively. And I wanted to make progression with every mod that I possibly could. But at the same time, I love the way those stance cars look. And I love the way a low car looks. It looks super aggressive. So it was kind of like, once a friend brought it to my attention, like, hey, have you ever looked into airlift performance, the, the air suspension that they offer? I was like, no. Okay, it can do all the cool things. It can slam to the ground. It can come up for driveways. If I break down the side of the road, it can raise the front, raise me up to get on a tow truck. There's all kinds of practicality that you still have. As long as it doesn't handle bad or, or, or poorly in any way, this should work perfectly for me. I decided to, after about two weeks of looking into it, pull the trigger on an air suspension system. How does it handle? That was my immediate question, because I, I knew no one with any experience with any of this. The car seemed to handle pretty damn good, if I'm being honest. I would say just like with any set of coilovers, any suspension period, there's fine tuning that you need to do. More compression, more rebound stiffness, whatever it might be. There's all kinds of things that you can do to fine tune a suspension system. It's never just right out of the box, boom, done, it's perfect. This is as fast and great as it's ever gonna be. That's not how it works. So after a couple bits of fine tuning and here and there, and then actually wanting to go to the track, and then figuring out, okay, during this really bumpy corner in second gear, if I take the inside and hit that inner bump, it unsettles the rear. So then, after talking with Airlift a little bit about, hey, what can I do? They have a solid team of engineers that actually do this stuff for fun on their own. 
they're totally into it just like I am. So that was seamless to communicate with. They gave me a few recommendations and then one step after another, I was competing with the exact same off-the-shelf kit that I had been dailying on just months ago. So e even up to now, it's, it's, it's just a, a normal kit that everybody can get their hands on. It, it just proved to kind of do it all. How does air suspension work? It's a super common question. It's very basic. Picture a coilover. Now you've got a spring that is wrapping around your damper. It's one unit, one piece. Take that spring, make it disappear, and replace it with a bag that holds air. You still have your damper. You still have all of your compression, rebound, and everything adjustment. It's essentially a bag over in a lot of cases. That's the mechanical part that's built into the car. So I keep it basic with an aluminum three gallon tank, single compressor, and then uh, quarter inch lines going around. The 3H system kind of incorporates everything into one. So it's kind of the best of both worlds and it's totally ideal for someone like me who is very picky about their spring rate, you know, their bag pressure, and needs that height to be nailed every time it goes up or down. Having those height sensors to back it up in correlation with pressure, there is accuracy that needs to be there. And luckily, it just works. You know, there's a lot of people that are afraid, like, I want to daily drive this car, uh, I can't have a leaky bag or a bag that's gonna pop on the freeway or anything like that. Trust me, neither can I. As long as your install goes smoothly and you are aware of the fact that the bag is going to slightly expand during compression, basic physics, and there's no screws or anything in firewalls or wheel wells or anything pointing at the bag for it to scrape and eventually pop on, then you're perfectly fine. As far as, as, far as air suspension being a gimmick, the first thing I'll say is that I bought this, I chose to put it on air. I didn't go to them and talk to them, they didn't approach me. <laughs> I, I had no affiliation with anything as far as air suspension. I just needed something that would work all around. Second thing, look at my results. I'm not saying that I'm the best, by far I am not the best. But we've been able to set a couple track records, a couple class records. I won my first season of Redline Time Attack, which was basically my intro to see if I want to do this or not and then it was getting into Global Time Attack Pro. I just want my results to speak for themselves and use those as facts. I just installed an entire setup on my daily driver, which is a 350Z, and I love it. I've driven two days on it. It was way too high right off, right off the bat. It, that height had to come down. So it's on air as of now. Love it, drives great. I would say that if you're looking for extra versatility, if you've got the budget for it, which is slightly increased over a set of coilovers, then I would definitely say at least look at air suspension and see if it's something you might be interested in. Future for myself and this car, um, as far as racing goes, would be to conquer the world, essentially. Um, that's gonna be everybody's dreams. I mean, myself and everybody around me that I see every time I go to the track, we're pouring everything we have into this. 